Without BMW's original GS, the adventure bikes we know today might never have existed. While there were large dual-sport or multi-purpose bikes before the R80 G per S, this model is widely credited with establishing the ADV category. Since the launch of the original R1150 GS Adventure in 2001, BMW's Adventure Focus version has always been designed for those looking for extra long-distance travel capabilities. The latest R1300 GS Adventure, based on last year's R1300 GS, continues that tradition in its fourth generation. So, what sets the Adventure model apart from the standard? Notable features include a larger 7.9-gallon fuel tank, up from 5 gallons, longer travel suspension with 8.3 inches at the front and 8.7 inches at the rear, versus 7.5 and 7.9 inches, and it's the first BMW motorcycle to offer the optional automated shift assistant, allowing automated clutch control and fully automatic riding. To explore all these new features and configurations, we spent two full days in southern Spain testing the bike on a range of terrain, from rugged dirt roads to smooth mountain asphalt north of Gibraltar. The goal? To see why riders might choose the adventure over the standard model. 2025 BMW R1300 GS Adventure Engine The new adventure model carries forward the latest engine update introduced with last year's R1300 GS. This boxer engine now displaces a full 1,300 cubic centimeters with a 106.5 by 73 millimeters bore and stroke compared to the previous model's 102.5 by 76 millimeters. It produces a claimed 145 horsepower at 7,750 RPM with peak torque of 110 pound FT at 6,500 RPM. An increase of 9 horsepower and 5 pound FT BMW states that the engine delivers at least 96 pound FT of torque between 3,600 and 7,800 RPM, with a red line at 9,000 RPM. The increased displacement, higher compression ratio, up from 12.5 to 13.3 to 1, and larger intake and exhaust valves, increased to 44 millimeters from 40 millimeters and 35.6 millimeters from 34 millimeters respectively, all contribute to the engine's added power. The shift cam technology, which enables variable cam timing, optimizes performance for both partial load and full load situations. Another innovation is the reposition transmission, now located below the engine rather than behind it. This change allows for a more compact design, improved weight distribution, and a lighter build overall. The engine now weighs 8.6 pounds less than its predecessor. Power is delivered to the new cardan shaft drive, featuring larger U-joints, via a 10-plate wet clutch with an anti-hopping or slipper mechanism. Below, we'll delve into the new optional automated shift assistant feature. Our first day on the GSA began with winding roads into the mountains toward Ronda, with a few dirt sections in the morning. After lunch, we encountered longer stretches of gravel and rugged dirt roads as we made our way south toward Tarifa near the Strait of Gibraltar. Initial impressions of an engine often stick, and this 1,300 boxer certainly leaves a lasting one. Without prior experience on the standard model, this ride offered a first look at its character. Right away, the broad torque curve stands out, paired with a punchy mid-range to top-end performance. Navigating the morning traffic and roundabouts of Malaga, the smooth low-end torque is both predictable and appreciated. Road mode strikes a good balance, delivering ample performance and response without excessive aggression. Once we hit the twistier sections, we switched to Dynamic Pro mode, which we had customized for maximum power and the sharpest engine response. In this setting, you get the maximum performance the boxer delivers with very sporty response and aggressive power. With the broad spread of torque, you can choose between a few gears on most roads. On tight roads, second or third gear is ideal, even in uphill, 180-degree hairpins, there is no need to drop down to first. When the road opens up with fast sweepers, you can shift it into fourth and leave it alone. And with peak power arriving well below red line, there is very little need to ever ring the 1300S neck. Without an amazing electronics package, the 1300 would be an unmanageable beast off-road. Over the course of the day, on the dirt sections, we altered the Enduro Pro settings that are totally customizable. At first we had the power set to rain, then quickly moved it to road, and by the end of the day had it set to dynamic. 
It's really just a matter of building trust with the delivery and the traction control to find a setting you're comfortable with. It's not just about how quickly and aggressively the rear end snaps out, but also about how much speed the bike can generate in a very short amount of time. The electronics provide such efficient drive that the big bike gets catapulted toward the next corner, at which point your braking skills get put to the test. After two days riding the adventure on a huge variety of terrain from some short single track sections, fast flowing dirt, tight and twisty asphalt, and the highway, the thing that stands out is that this engine is perfectly happy everywhere. Not only do the great electronics, which we'll talk more about shortly, give the bike an amazing spread of capabilities, but the nature of the engine's power delivery complements a huge variety of situations. Whether you're tiptoeing through rocks in first gear at 5 miles per hour, blasting gravel at 60, or slaying sweepers at 100, the 1300 Boxer is up for the challenge. Automated Shift Assistant One of the headline features on the new R1300GS Adventure is the Automated Shift Assistant, an $850 option in the US. Back in May, we reported on BMW's innovative solution to a semi-automatic gearbox, but didn't know at the time which motorcycle it would make its debut in. Now we know that the GSA is the first bike in the company's lineup to get the feature. The way the system works is mechanically simplistic, yet electronically sophisticated. There are two electromechanical actuators, one that operates the clutch and one that turns the transmission shift shaft. The clutch is a hydraulic system with a direct connection between the master and slave cylinders. The actuator regulates the required amount of slip and engages and disengages the clutch automatically. Sensors on the transmission shaft determine transmission speed, and then the actuator executes the shift. Unlike Honda's E-Clutch, which is simply an electronically controlled clutch, the ASA system enables a fully automatic drive mode. The ASA-equipped models don't have a clutch lever on the bar, but still retain a foot-operated shift lever in the traditional location. The rider can choose between manual operation or the automated drive operation from a button on the left control pod. If the rider chooses M, they must first apply a brake to allow the bike to engage first gear. Then you leave the clutch work to the bike and pull away by rolling on the throttle. From this point on, in manual mode, the bike acts like a totally conventional motorcycle. The ASA system's other mode of operation is the drive mode. Select D from the bar mounted button, apply a brake and shift down in a first, and then every other function is automated. The transmission becomes a fully automatic unit that will clutch and shift for you. The transmission's algorithms are tied to the drive modes that you have selected. So if you are in rain mode, it will take that into account and shift at very conservative RPM points. Or if you're in Dynamic Pro, it will hold gears deep into the rev range with quick sporty shifts.